secure, make sure your phone is secure, make sure your phone is on silent, silence. Okay, all right. There's a bit of order. Okay, good afternoon once again. Good afternoon. How is everyone doing? All right. I'm happy that I'm seeing smiles, so everyone is happy to be here. My name is Rachel Chiza or Chiza, depending on which part of Uganda you come from. I follow on both sites. I pronounce that name the way they do, so it doesn't really matter how you pronounce it. And I'm the project coordinator at African Writers Trust. Nice to see everyone. Thank you for coming out. Thank you um, for coming to support Jennifer, really, because this is about Jennifer and I'm a fan. I'm a huge, huge fan. All right, so I know people have been asking, will they have selfies with Jennifer again? <laughs> yes, you will. <laughs> so don't worry about that. Don't worry. You will definitely have selfies with her or photos or whatever it is that you want to do <laughs> with Jennifer and the books. I hope that is acceptable with you. Okay, absolutely. So yay, yay to the photos. Well, yeah, thank you so much for being here on time. And... Um, this event is organized by the African Writers Trust in collaboration with Gote Institute. So the Gote team is here. Thank you guys for the support and the love. Thank you. And um, we will have Jackie Asimwe. Uh, the introductions will be done properly, but to let you know that our host is in the house. So you don't wonder that he is where is the host. The host is in the house, Jennifer Nansu Gabakobi is in the house as well. Yeah, so yeah, we are doing really well. We're doing really well. Like everyone is here, we're supposed to be here. So uh, we have a live stream, and I think they should have shared the link on our social media pages now. So you can share with the people who are not able to come in person and they can still catch the conversation and they will be able to send the questions for Jennifer and we all enjoy it together. So right now, um, in October, we had a program, a training workshop, which we call the AWT Emerging Writers Workshop, where we had young writers, emerging writers, okay, 18 to 25, at Hot Springs Villas, where our training center is. And we had a Cameroonian writer, Bestie Wells, Eric Charles Singale, take them through a training on memoir writing and personal stories. So we have some of them here with us this afternoon, and they will be, some will be reading from their short stories, others will be reading from poems that they wrote during the workshop. So uh, we'll start with Lorraine. Who will be Lorraine is 17, 18. Okay, Lorraine is 18 and she's going to be reading for us. Let's be gentle, let's be kind. She's a young writer, so we don't want to be brutal. <laughs> we don't want to be brutal, we want to encourage her. Thank you. When did I cost you life? It took me courage to write my story, and I will understand anybody who will judge and criticize me, but accepting your origin is priceless. A house, old, spacious and lonely is where I grew up. Every man lived with every man and every man I lived with minded his own business. Nothing surprised anybody. We seemed like strangers to each other. The only time we gathered was during the week, but even then. I was never allowed to join the others. I always had my meals in the kitchen with the woman in Sanders who was always plain and pale. I don't remember ever smiling in this mansion as it was referred to by Mrs. Mbappe, who would always be angry at me and the woman in Sanders. 
She detested us so much that she could not help but insult us whenever we encountered her. She was she was always adult in fine material. Her hair was brown and bright jewels showed on her neck, ears, and fingers. Being only six years old, I didn't understand why she was why she always insulted us, and yet it seemed to me like she had everything. Unlike the woman in Cinders, whose strongish face was always so plain and pale. Whenever I hid and sought with the other children, Mrs. Zimbabwe pulled my ear and I would seek for refuge from the woman in Cinders. Don't worry, my daughter, Mrs. Zimbabwe didn't mean to. She would say to me as she cleaned my chairs with her thumb and let her warmly embrace me in her arms. Weeks, months, and years, all I wanted was someone to call daddy, just like most of the friends at school. Turning 16 did not make me the same. I loved scrutinizing the six feet eight inch tall sailor from the giant craft where I know. I had a roundish face, black eyes. That seductive smile I adopted from my mother left people staring. My jewel-laden eyes shone so bright in the night. All these were held up high by my long neck that, down to my body shoulders, with my breasts swaying gently as I walked. My nails. 